Now, if you've seen the title of the video, you know what we're going to be talking about. So I have to warn you before we do anything that there will be some swearing. There will be some bad words in this one because referees and swearing, unfortunately, when it comes to me, are inseparable. And when it comes to VAR, it feels like for everyone it is inseparable as well. And we've been covering Wolves on the channel quite a lot. We've been covering a lot of clubs across European football that have fell victim to lots of painful, divisive decisions from referees on the pitch and then the guys in the VAR room all across Europe in the Champions League, but particularly in England and I guess in Scotland as well. Now, I normally don't like commenting on referees and all that kind of stuff because from a coach's perspective, like there's always more you can do in the game. There's always more you can do as a team to affect the result where the referee isn't, become, isn't going to become an, you know, as major an influence as they have became in recent times. But I do think the situation with Wolves and Gary O'Neill is 100% the exception to the rule. I've went back through every Wolves match this season to see exactly the points they've dropped, where they've dropped them and how it all happened, to see exactly how many points they have dropped down to VAR, to on-field decisions, that kind of thing. So just to look at the whole state of the injustice and just really the state of referee we've got at the moment because for me VAR should be an abs should be an amazing thing because being a coach being a fan as someone who's right involved in football and watches and watches every game possible the main thing we all want VAR to come in and remove and we were all impressed with initially in the Russia World Cup all that nonsense that referees can do to people in a match and a team to an individual player just with bad decisions or just I'm not giving you that today or nah or that team, everything they do is going to be a foul, but nothing you do. You wanted VAR to come in to remove all the pish refereeing that goes on. It just really mires a game and then doesn't make it about the football teams anymore. It makes it more about the decisions and who is more capable of winning decisions on the referee and, you know, all that crap. And, you know, that's not what we want as football fans. We want VAR to come in and remove all the bullshit so that if something clearly happens on the pitch and everyone is like, whoa, what the fuck just happened there? How did he give a penalty for that? Why is he sent him off for that? That's the kind of stuff we want VAR to eliminate. The problem you've got is as soon as that drop of power comes into, oh, we can now influence decisions, we can make sure we get the right decisions, Goaling technology, I'm all about that. You'd want that to be black and white and you don't want people, you know, incorrectly getting goals given or, or for and against it, like we've seen in the past, which is be beautiful. And I think there's a place in the football world for offside as well. And I'll maybe maybe on a separate video talk about offside a, bit, a wee bit more specifically because I do think, again, it's quite a contentious one with elbows and noses and all that shit. So for another day, I suppose. So for everything else that VAR should possibly be intervening in, like red cards, penalties, goal decisions, identity, you know, all that kind of stuff that is meant to be brought in for the clear and obvious errors in these categories that, you know, we're, we're all wildly aware of it's meant to be covering at the moment. That is where it should stay and that's what it should be there for. And like I say, and it's why I make the apology at the beginning for saying I'm going to swear because it's the best way to really encapsulate what I'm talking about here. You know, like I mentioned already, you know, I'm a coach and I've had wildly shite referees and at different levels of the game. There's nothing you can do about it. But when you're at the elite level of the game where they have all the facilities available, the best referees in the game as well, then you do expect that none of that shite comes all the way to the top end of the game and allows, we talk about grassroots and we talk about, you know, setting standards for professionals up and down the football pyramid all the time. And officials is no different. If you're an up-and-coming up official and you can see like a role model official in a top division and they don't take any shit and they run the game and they decide who's going to get the fouls for pulling shirts or they decide who's going to get the 50-50s at, you know, you know what I'm talking about? The pish. I had a referee one time penalise my team for the six second rule. If you don't know what the six second rule is, there might be one or two of you at home that don't know what it is. It's when the goalkeeper holds the ball for more than six seconds. It's to prevent people wasting time or ball hogging and just, you know, being anti-football in essence. Uh, that was given against my team in the fifth minute of the match. It wasn't a cup game. It wasn't all that important a match either. That resulted in an indirect free kick in the box. <laughs> And a couple of yellow cards for complaining for it, you know. And, you know, at grassroots level or amateur, part-time level, whatever, you kind of get that. You accept that. Because the referees are learning their trade as well. They're only human. They could only be in the position. And then some of them are, unfortunately, going to be pish in that sense that they're going to maybe sometimes give you stuff and some other times, depending on the referee, maybe they don't give you stuff. And that's part of football. We all kind of get that to an extent. But what the VAR should be doing is eliminating the clear and obvious bullshit from all of it where it's like, nah, you cannot send him off for that. 
That should be a penalty. That shouldn't be a penalty. The clear and obvious stuff. And I suppose probably one of the last kind of sweeping general points I'll kind of make on this since we're talking about the subject is, unfortunately, even at the elite level, there is such a, a, a tech poverty. You know, if you look at the Champions League uh, technology they've got for offsides and the mad 3D imaging that they can do, you know, there's clearly levels of technology. If you watch Scottish football, you will clearly see the cheapest version of it. If you watch MLS, La Liga... Bundesliga, Premier League, you see varying qualities of very similar items. And you also see a slight variation on, you know, threshold of decisions given, which is also something that, hey, you maybe accept that, you know, maybe Spain's a bit more lenient with something and Germany's a bit harder with something or, you know, whatever. But again, when you have that kind of inconsistency of, well, that league isn't able to capture offside as well as this other league or the Champions League is the best at it or, you know, these stadiums in Scotland, they've only got like three cameras and sometimes the camera angles so terrible that getting the lines on it is impossible but if you had them you know if you spent some money on it you got them add 3d image and stuff maybe that would be possible anyway not for today so we currently set 13 games into the premier league and i think we all watched monday night football and we were all on the edge of our seats watching fulham versus wolves and i think almost everyone is in complete agreement that wolves have yet again been robbed i did a video on the channel recently talking about how wolves are like so close to being a top six top eight team on current form if a few decisions had went their way or if they'd like i say from the coach's perspective finished a few of their chances they have missed 17 big chances so far in the premier league which across 13 games very much does outweigh the refereeing decisions that have went against them but i do think i'm not you know not with Wolves, this doesn't come into it because the refereeing decisions have been so wildly horrific. You need to go all the way back to the beginning of the season to remember the Onana incident where, at the time, Man United are beating Wolves, although being the worst team in the game. Wolves missed three sitters in this match by my count, and Onana, in the last part of the game, comes out and absolutely wipes out one of the Wolves players. Should have been a penalty, it's not given, and a point is dropped on match day one. Now, Wolves were thoroughly beaten by Brighton. It was a tight loss to Crystal Palace in Liverpool was a pretty good beating as well. I didn't watch any of the Bulls victories because obviously there's no VAR decisions going against them and those victories that would have cost them any points because they've got all three. So you need to go all the way to the Luton game. Now the Bellegarde red card for me is a real decision that really does boil my blood because the VAR should be there to punish fairly and appropriately the incident in question. If you look at the Bellegarde red card, which is a bit of a tongue twister, it took me a few times to say that one. Yes, he does kick out of the guy and I think you have to give him a red card for that. But if you're looking at the TVs and you look at the situation, Wolves are on a counter attack, Bellegarde and this guy get into a scuffle and Bellegarde's trying to get back to his feet really quickly. This guy clicks onto what's going on and he just gets down. He just sits down on his leg and ends up in a figure four leg lock with him, which results results in Bellegarde having to kick out but I think if you're using VAR and you're going to stand by the red card on field decision you have to inform the referee that it takes two to tango and that is I'd say two red cards for both that's how you want to do it and then the penalty right at the, you know the penalty with the handball deflection is a really difficult one because it's in the box and all the rest of it but the hand position is that what makes the difference what I think is becoming a little bit clearer with you know, this stance that referees normally hide behind this shield of like, oh, we know the rules of the game, is the more times they're called into question for what the rules of the game are, is the more the inconsistencies come out. It's hard to really keep track of what the rules of the game are because, you know, quite often we know handball situations, if it's off a, an immediate deflection, like off another body part, then it's not normally given against. But then again, sometimes it is if it's in the box, if it's a shot on target. So really don't know how to feel about that, but I do think the red card situation overall is enough to suggest that Wolves were thoroughly done over in this game. And that is three points dropped because they ended up drawing the game with Luton. Now I watched the Derby match against Aston Villa and I remember it being quite a, a drab a game, you know, quite, you know, a lot of free kicks and fouls, not many shots, but quite end to end. And upon re-reviewing it, I couldn't see Lamina's first yellow card, but I don't think there's any complaints from the Villa game. I think a draw, you'd probably be quite happy with that. And then we come to the draw with Newcastle. Now, I, again, really do hate this penalty decision that's went against them for the simple fact that when the cross comes in or the corner comes in from Newcastle, Quang is in possession of the ball. He's taken two or three touches and yet he's lost a little bit of control. And yet the Newcastle player has came in to try and take control of the ball. But Huang is clearly in possession. He's only got eyes for the ball and is trying to play a pass. That's all he's trying to do. And with the other guy coming in and interfering and hurting himself or getting himself hurt in the process, it results in a penalty going against Wolves. This kind of thing's happened yeah, with Celtic. It's happened to a few teams that I've been watching, I think maybe even once in Spain. 
in fact, as well. And it's one that I, I always boils my blood because if you're in possession, how it's one thing that I just I always always irks me and I'll argue with people about it all day but if you're in possession I always find it really hard to concede a foul because you're in possession of the ball you're defending possession as long as you're not whacking someone and you know doing something crazy then you know like you're going to pass the ball I'm in possession I'm going to pass and if that guy comes in and he's reckless and my pass ends up hurting him then come on you know I, I don't like that I, me personally you might shout at me, call me an idiot for that, but that's just my kind of take on it. So the Huang penalty against for Newcastle, for me, I don't like it at all. I think that is thoroughly a bad decision that's went against them for my money. So that adds up to seven points. Now, Gary O'Neill in his post-game with the Fulham one, I think he says himself he's been quite conservative and he's saying it, you know, maybe seven, maybe eight points. But I'm at seven already and very quickly then we come to the Sheffield United game that has... Probably, you know, the one that I think more people were upset with because it was a 100th minute thing. Now, me re-watching it on the highlights, I don't really get the full gauge of was the added time just and that kind of thing. I don't remember it too clearly from the time. But that penalty decision amongst all the ones that have went against Wolves, to be honest with you, I don't think that one was as bad as some of the other ones potentially. So again, it depends on your, your POV with some of this stuff. But again, maybe the 100 minutes, maybe the other stuff, you know, again, there's a point here dropped probably. And then we've got the Fulham game that happened last night and Fulham obviously leave the game with all three points. Maybe you believe Wolves should have won the game and got three points, which would take their deficit down to refereeing on-field decisions and the influence of VAR up to 11 points if you believe Wolves should have beat Fulham and you're with me with all these other decisions that have went against them thus far in these 13 games and that is an absolute huge tally of points that is season defining if you add an extra 11 points onto Wolves and now they would be on 26 joint fifth with Tottenham probably in sixth position down to goal difference probably with the amount of sitters they've been missing and ahead of Man United which would be poetic because having the first game of the season dropped points to them it would feel only right to be back ahead of them in the league and that's the problem with Wolves is they've looked great in some of these games but they've just not taken all their chances and then the refereeing decisions when they go against you they're even harder but this shows quite clearly that it's not working it needs to be fixed it needs to be changed and I think if we're getting to that point where I, th I think you cannot remove VAR because you do need some sort of safeguard against pish referees that are just making bad decisions having a bad night getting things wrong uh, to be able to correct that so I don't think you can totally get away from it now that we've got it and it you know, ultimately there is something it can solve. So if we're going to go back to the drawing board with it, for me, I think we have to just reassess and just like really clear it out. Clear and obvious. The language of that doesn't work, obviously. We need to make it bullshit and pish, right? We don't mind a bit of pish from some referees, but we're not taking the absolute bullshit. And I know sometimes I've mixed those words up, but hey-ho, it's my channel. I can do what I want. <laughs> now, it's not much solace for Wolves at the moment. There's not much recompense. I don't imagine they're going to get points awarded back to them or anything like that. But there is really nothing Wolves can do. There is really nothing that Gary O'Neill, the team, anyone can do because they're not going to replay the matches. They're not going to award any points. And in future matches, you can't just have decisions given to you in lieu of what happened in the past because... Again, unless it's against the direct same opponent, it's just getting too crazy. So unfortunately, Wolves need to swallow this pill and just keep going with it. But I think, you know, they're definitely going to have a memorable season. There's no two ways about that now. I hope to see them get through the next couple of fixtures and get a few more points on the board like they deserve. It is a pretty grueling fixture list for Wolves between now and the winter break for them. And, you know, they've got a good squad and they've been playing really well. They've not got much midweek action to worry about. Nothing on the fixture list at the moment. No cups or anything. So they can go weekend to weekend. They can prepare for every opposition game that they're going to into and you know how many points can they get over those matches I'm not too sure the Premier League is so difficult it's so tight but Wolves have definitely shown they're a team that can mix it with anyone in the Premier League at the moment and they're not to be taken lightly these refereeing decisions are obviously very well publicised I don't think anyone will, will be taking Wolves lightly in the upcoming games but I really do hope to see them collect some points in the upcoming games that like I say unfortunately they've not managed to collect at this part of the season I'd love to hear from you in the comment section and let me know what you think about Wolves you know this season you know how bad is the injustice against them? Is it 11 points? Is it 9? I think we can all agree the 1 point for Man United. The 3 points with Luton. Maybe you disagree with that. They drew 2 each with Newcastle with that Huang penalty where he's in like possession of the ball when he goes to pass it. Maybe you think that is a penalty. Maybe that's just the Sheffield United 100th minute penalty with Norwood and then Fulham last night. Let me know in the comment section how many points do you think Wolves are down? On screen there now is some other stuff that I've made that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this one. Probably not because we're talking about referees and who enjoys that really? Probably no one. Stay out of trouble and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.